This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the M5 iPad Pro for 2025. Same design as last generation, not a bad thing, it got a redesign for last generation. Crazy thin and light. If you haven't upgraded for a couple of years, you actually would notice the difference. Happily, one thing that hasn't changed is the price. Still starting at $999 for the 11 inch and $1299 for the 13 inch. We're gonna look at it now. And as with the previous generation, you can get it with 5G if you want, millimeter wave and sub six, and that's $200 extra. And if you want the nano texture glass, that kind of etched glass thing, you can get that as well. But just like last time around, it requires getting a one terabyte or a two terabyte in storage model. Now, those are your two high-end options there. So they kind of make you really want it. And I, I've talked about that option before. I'll talk about it a little bit again in the future. The display itself is the same as last generation, which is just fine because it's a high resolution tandem OLED 120 hertz display, uh, anti-reflective coating if you go for the normal display. So it's not as glary as it might be. And the aspect ratio for the 11 inch is kind of close to three by two. And the 13 inch is still four by three, one of the few tablets left with that kind of aspect ratio. For productivity work, that sort of thing matters. When I compare it to something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab, that one is, well, 16 by 10 aspect ratio now, which might be better for if you're mostly just watching videos and that sort of thing, but for, for productivity and other app use like that, I do kind of prefer having something along the aspect ratios of the iPads. It's just a little less strangely narrow and tall sort of thing. Inside we have no surprise, it's the M5 iPad Pro, right? So we have the M5 processor, which duh, is gonna be faster than the M4. It's not wildly faster, but the GPU got noticeably faster. This matters because a lot of people buy iPad Pros to play games and there are high quality games and very high end 3D games and ray tracing games even available for the iPad. And also because people use them to edit photos, right? So you, you've got a wonderful fast processor that benchmarks as fast as some of the thinner, lighter gaming laptops, which is mind boggling right there. And you've got a great OLED display. And now you've got the Apple Pencil and touchscreen available, which is something you can't do still with a Mac to this day, so it certainly makes sense. You wanna use Lightroom Mobile on this, which is quite capable at this point, you can. There's other third-party apps, there's Procreate for people who love to draw and paint, for example, there's Pixelmator, all sorts of things. And for those of you who edit video, there is Final Cut for the iPad too. So sure, it doesn't do every single thing that you can do on the desktop version, but it's surprisingly capable. It's This is nothing new, so I won't go into too much detail, but there's a lot you can do that could justify the cost besides wanting the, the nice fast iPad with the best display, which I think probably half the people that buy it are buying because they want the nicest display and are Fairly fast iPad with face ID, so it's quick, convenient login and all that kind of thing. The, the modern creature comforts. We also have a faster NPU for AI because everything is about AI in 2025, so that is great for those of you who are taking advantage of those features as well on it. Um, I'm not gonna to focus too much on that. I think people who are real hardcore into LLMs and other AI stuff and AI image editing, though obviously this can do the photo bomb editing, remove things from the photo you don't want. But if you're really hardcore about that, you're probably still gonna use maybe a gaming laptop even with the hardcore GPU inside, but it is there. We also have Wi-Fi 7 on board. Apple's using their own chips now for that and it's Apple. Apple's own 5G modem, which same thing they use for the iPhone. So they've proved to be very capable and they work just fine. So no complaints with that. You get more RAM this time around, starting at 12 gigs of RAM, which is nice. If you get the higher storage models, you get 16 gigs of RAM. So, you know, it used to be iPads were all this powerful hardware. Great. Who who cares if Geekbench 6 GPUs are the same as uh, a thin and light gaming laptop if it's just a tablet it can't do much. So iOS 26 brought some of the things people have been asking for. You can now have floating windows if you want. You can have background processing, which counts for a lot. Say you are processing some video, you want to background it and check your email or something like that, you can do it. The file manager has become more capable. So it's getting there. I mean, we all imagine the day when maybe Mac OS and iPad OS actually become one and the same. I don't know. Will that happen? But anyway, with iPad OS 26, it kind of starts to make some sense to have something this powerful. 
Can you use this as a laptop stand? And that, that question's been asked since iPads first came out. Some people can, some people can. Depends what you want to do. Everyday productivity stuff. Photo editing, absolutely you can. Uh, Zoom calls, all that sort of thing. Sure, you could. And of course, there is the optional keyboard. The magnetically attached, really rigid, really stiff, feels great, costs $300. Oh my God, it's an expensive keyboard, but it does bring a more laptop-like experience while adding more weight. And by the way, this weighs... 0.98 pounds as ever for the 11 inch and 1.28 pounds for the 13 inch. So by itself, it's pretty light. If you get a folio cover, it's still really light. And once you add those keyboard covers on, it gets less light. Still, you get a charger in the box, which is, oh, thank God. Uh, it's the 20 watt charger with a one meter USB-C cable. One meter, that's three feet. That's like, really, you just spent at least a thousand dollars and you only got this little cable. Thanks, Apple. And it's nice that you get a charger, but if you want to take advantage of the fastest charging possible, and for this generation, now you can charge at 50% in 30 minutes, which is a godsend. That is wonderful. But you have to use a 60 watt or higher USB-C charger for that. So that is not in the box. You might have one from your Mac or from your Windows Ultrabook kind of laptop, but it's not in the box. We have four speakers, stereo sound as before. It's a little bit louder than the previous generation. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is because it's sort of like when you get a high-end stereo system. You went from some kind of, you know, weenie sound bar and you got this high-end stereo system that actually voices can be a little harder to understand. Maybe especially if you're getting to be of a certain age like I am, uh, because you've got all this other stuff. You've got bass going on. You've got super high mid-range and all. It's a fuller sound. It's very nice, but um, I would have liked a little more treble tuning maybe to bring voices forward because you've got that whole big sound in a small box kind of thing, which means they're actually doing a pretty good job. I can't complain in the end. Battery life claims are about the same as the previous generation, which means, you know, around 10-ish hours or so. I find it runs just a little shorter compared to the previous generation iPad on a charge. But given the additional horsepower here, I'm not surprised. Display brightness has stayed about the same. It's 1,000 nits SDR on auto brightness only, and it's about 1,550 nits if you're going with HDR measurements there. So certainly a very bright display. And it supports the Apple Pencil Pro, which is the latest one with hover and with the squeezy feature. And you can use the USB-C more basic one that still supports tilt and the important things for doing artwork. As ever, this is a fantastic platform for art. Just wonderful pencil resp response, very natural. I am an artist, those of you who watch my channel know. And it, it's just a pleasure to use this. Compared to the Samsung Galaxy Tab that it competes with, that uses a Wacom EMR pen, which is also very good. But the one thing that I find is that is slipperier. It skates around more. Maybe it's the thickness of the nib and the very glossy, shiny display they use on the Samsung. So, I mean, you can put a screen protector on any of these if you want to give it a little more tooth at the expense of making them look a little bit less pretty. Or in the case of Apple's, there is, they're kind of pricey, but it's their nano textured display, which, you know, it always looks bad on video, but when you see it in person, it doesn't because it somehow manages to reflect studio lights and all that sort of thing. But it is very effective at mitigating what it's supposed to be, glare, and adding a little extra tooth when you draw with. But for me personally, I even though I do like to draw on the iPad, I find it's good enough without that, and I like the way it looks without the nano texture. That's me. Now, one thing to note is it still can get hot. Not hot to the touch, burning your hands hot, but I was playing Alien Isolation. Okay, that is a very demanding game, granted. And I had it plugged into the charger, mostly because it just needed to be charged. You don't get any performance benefit, unlike a gaming laptop when you plug it in. And I did get a, a notice towards the end of a 20 minute play session that said, suspending charging, getting too hot for that, will resume when things cool down. And once I quit the game, it did resume in under 60 seconds charging. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I'm not concerned about it. But for those of you who keep an eye on things like that and wondering how much has changed, uh, it can still get warm. Now, for those of you who are saying, oh my God, a thousand dollar iPad. Yes, I can't blame you. That's why Apple makes more affordable ones. Like I said, a lot of people want the processing power. They want the future proofiness. They want the beautiful display, let's face it, and the convenience of face ID. But also when you think of it, right, this little guy is $1,000 too. So you're getting a whole lot more product, physically speaking, with an iPad Pro. So it, you can look at these things in a million ways. If you can afford it and you want it, it's an excellent product. If you already have an M4, 
No, there's really not enough reason to upgrade. But if you have an older one, like you're coming from an M2 or iPad Pro or something even older, you'll notice the difference. You'll notice how much better the display is, especially the older 11-inch iPad Pros that didn't even get mini LED or any nice display, really, just high-end IPS. So now you've got this OLED display. You've got the thinner, lighter design. You've got all the performance and the modernness and more RAM and all that good stuff. So then it makes sense if you're interested in spending that much money on something that at least is bigger than this. <laughs> I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.